Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to have you on this class. We're learning about um, uh, prophetic ministry. And uh, in the last class, we were looking at the prophetic ministry in the Old Testament. So let's uh, begin with the word of prayer. Uh, and then you know we we continue from where we have stopped. I would like to request uh, anyone from our class here to lead us, please, in prayer. Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, I just pray that throughout the class, uh, you will help us to open our mind and heart. And you will open our spiritual eyes so that we can understand the deep, deep truth that is in your Bible, Lord. You are the beginning of the wisdom. You are the beginning of the knowledge. And we ask you to be our beginning today. Be with us, guide us, Lord, and help us to have good Wi-Fi connections throughout the class. And whatever we learn, help us to apply it in our lives so that we can live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jafina, for leading us uh, in prayer. So, um, we were discussing about uh, the prophetic and how it manifested in the Old Testament. Uh, we saw you know, so many wonderful things about um, how God poured out his spirit and generally on select uh, men and women and they began to prophesy. We saw uh, about the school that Samuel established to train up uh, young prophets and develop their uh, gift. We saw uh, the relationship between Elijah and Elisha. And we also saw how God is the one who gives us the anointing and uh, it does not come from the people. We've also looked at uh, how this uh, power of the prophetic manifested, uh, especially when there was demonic opposition, all genuine prophetic uh, you know, that the um, prophetic gift or the prophetic ministry, uh, we've seen that it had, you know, some sort of an opposition. Um, then we saw how it's very important to maintain personal obedience. But we can have a good public ministry, but personal obedience is something that God um, is, is really looking at and uh, we need to maintain it. So, after that, now we are coming to, um, we are at page 45, where we talk about prophets and their diverse experiences. Um, here, we uh, see certain phrases. Okay? These are the phrases that were used when uh, several prophets had, uh, they heard from God and they ministered that word to the people. So phrases like the burden of the word of the Lord, was used. So uh, you have prophets such as Isaiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, uh, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Malachi. They express the word and they described it as a burden. So a burden could be understood as something like um, a word which has come into our hearts and it is felt you know, in, in a in a way, you could say uh, it's it's heavy. You can sense that that word is in your heart, in your spirit, and it needs to be released. So the burden of the Lord is is one of the ways in which uh, it is described. So this word burden is masa uh, from uh, the Hebrew, and uh, it typically you know it it means responsibility or weight of a task that has been given. So. With a deep sense of responsibility, one needed to release the word to either an individual or the people. And the word would go forth and do its work. Now, there are other phrases as well that were used to describe the prophetic word um, or the prophetic experience. So the terms, uh, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, that is also common. And I'm sure many of us are aware of this uh, a little more as compared to the burden of the Lord. So here, what do we see? We see here that uh, when the prophetic word was released, prophets would say, um, or, or scripture says, the hand of the Lord was upon 
whoever that particular prophet and they prophesied so ezekiel has many uh, such passages where you notice that word hand of the lord now how do we understand this hand of the lord is something like if somebody were to uh, touch us or put their hand on our shoulders we have uh, a sense of their presence so maybe it's similar to that when the word of the lord came to the prophets they felt uh, god's presence and there was that awareness uh, by and they knew that the prophetic anointing would uh, would be stirred up in them and that they would they would have a word which they must uh, share or they must convey the message so the hand of the lord that's another way that uh, the prophetic experience was described now there are others um, which are not so common uh, like the spirit lifted me and generally uh, ezekiel is is the person who talks about this the spirit lifted me and then in his experience we see that you know he was transported here or transported there now questions are asked about whether he was transported um, physically or was it in the spiritual realm uh, it it's um, you know it it appears that it could have been in visions so not necessarily um, through physical you know physical uh, in in a physical way uh, traveling across different places so this was again something that happened to him uh, when when the prophetic word came to him now the other thing that we notice is um, we see that there was a sense of seriousness a sense of seriousness which the prophet had so when the word came to the prophet you know they um, felt that there was an in immense sense of responsibility which they carried and uh, that they had to deliver the word so a sense of seriousness uh, is also something that is uh, um, you know stated to describe the prophetic experience so just some some things for us to uh, learn and uh, understand now moving on warnings and judgments so uh, a huge part of the prophetic ministry of uh, many of the prophets was judgments and you know we we are we we are quite clear about that you know they would come and we just saw that term the burden so the burden of the lord against uh, moab the burden of the lord against so uh, there were these words that were being spoken over people or uh, cities or, or nations um, and we'll see later on in the new testament that warnings and judgments you know that is something that we don't really um uh, venture into through the simple gift of prophecy okay uh, the simple gift of prophecy is mainly uh, exhortation edification and comfort uh, but there is a place for warnings and judgment and generally it is somebody who is in the office of a prophet okay who would move in this realm where they are speaking uh, god's word now word to a nation or a community of people and calling them to repentance so in the old testament you know all of this is there uh, but another truth that we must uh, recognize is that these warnings and judgments are also part of god's redemptive uh, plan because you know god was there to them repent uh, if you repent then you know things will will be different for you so uh, the prophets brought these words but the call was essentially to repent so one such uh, incident that is recorded here in our notes for us is uh, the prophet elijah speaking over king ahab king ahab and jezebel we know that they were very um they were ungodly uh, jezebel was was somebody who was involved in a lot of occultic practices uh, and especially at the time when uh, naboth okay, an owner of the vineyard was uh, killed by ahab there was a word that uh, elijah the tishbite brought to the king and you know it was a very um sort of uh, like a, a so unpleasant 
okay that word that came so uh, it said that uh, you know you have murdered uh, naboth and so dogs uh, in the place where dogs lick the blood of nabo dogs shall lick your blood even yours so god was talking about a calamity uh, which would come upon ahab and his death would be you know really um, really bad but we see the rest of what happened uh, ahab was somebody who repented okay so he repented when he heard this this uh, word of warning and uh, later on you know we understand that though such a uh, judgment was pronounced on him finally the calamity sort of came upon him in parts because he humbled himself so he did go through the consequences of his actions but you know god um, so it got staggered you know the punishment was was staggered and god changed the way uh, he actually experienced that judgment so prophets uh, used to bring warnings and they used to bring judgments but the intention mainly was to call people to repentance so if they repented see even in this case ahab is a very very evil and a wicked king and god rel relented and god um, made it easier for ahab so that's the way a lot of judgments are seen okay uh, what else is there about god speaking in the old testament there were times when um, the voice of the lord was not heard you see we said that god is a god who speaks but there were certain actions or sins uh, which which were uh, god was not happy about those things and so he never even spoke to the people at the time when uh, you know uh, in the book of uh, samuel that's a time first samuel 28 and verse 6 and when samuel inquired of the lord the lord did not answer him either by dreams or by urim or by the prophet so you see there are all these means uh, dreams urim uh, or prophets but what happened you know samuel was the uh, prophet but then saul you know he tried to inquire of the lord out of turn uh, he was he was trying to do something which was not his calling his primary calling and he was rebelling against god he was going in his own ways and this moving away from god and rebellion is what caused god not to communicate with saul even though he used the principles okay but the uh, deeper thing which is the relationship the kind of relationship that saul had with god was not right and so god did not answer his prayer idolatry you know idolatry uh, is also something that we see where god uh, was upset with the people and because there was so much of idolatry uh, in the land you know when people inquired of the lord they did not god did not answer and so in these two instances we've seen it and there are you know other instances where the presence of the lord uh, departed and all so um, rebellion um you know sinfulness these things can shut god's voice away from us not that god doesn't speak uh, or he does not want to speak but we have to understand that god is holy and when we are pushing the limits we are we are crossing the boundaries uh, somewhere it is it it has happened in the old testament where there was no response from god and uh, that is something that you know we we too must be warned against uh, i hope you're all doing fine any um, anything to ask or talk about i, I have a vague memory of a question probably in the last class that we didn't complete uh, i don't know so yeah please go ahead i saw anita's hand go up i saw divya's and jafina so you can all go in that order if it's okay yeah 
Uh, so, Pastor, I have a question. Uh, this is something I wanted to ask from the, when I came to know it's prophetic ministry, the class I wanted to ask from that day. So, uh, about this whole COVID, right? About this whole COVID. Uh, so, there was a prophet in Tamil Nadu. So, uh, he came to know about the COVID two to three years ago, it seems. So, uh, the thing is, uh, when he came and uh, said it on the stage, uh, when the whole COVID was happening in the lockdown in the television, he said, like, God sent COVID. Uh, it was his plan. Uh, and because the people are rebellious and so many things. So when, uh, and then that's something I think every Christian in Tamil Nadu, we believed. But when I got back to my church, when my pastor preached, he said, uh, is it God's will to kill someone? Is it God's will to send sickness to someone? So he was very uh, strongly saying, like, it was not God's will. COVID was not God's will. It was uh, from the Saturn or something. He was saying like that. So the, that time, uh, I mean, in the whole COVID, we believed, okay, and we really prayed, like, God, take back COVID. Uh, forgive our sins, forgive our people, and so many things we prayed for. And when the, after the COVID, when the when he said those words, it was like, yeah, that is also true. Like, why why God will send uh, some sickness to people? Why God will actually kill people? So I, that time I stopped believing in prophecies. Actually, I'm like, okay, people say they came to know about it two years ago, and they are even he could have just said like something is coming, but he didn't say like that. He said God sent COVID. He was very strong about that point. So what do you think about this? Is it is it the right way or not? Is it Yeah, Jeffina, thank you for uh, sharing that experience of yours. Um, see, we know for a fact that God cannot work against himself. Why did Jesus come? Even when we look at uh, Isaiah 53, you know, he he um, he bore our, our sorrows, our griefs, he carried, uh, you know, uh, all these things. So um, he carried our emotional pain he carried our physical uh, issues like you know uh, sickness disease and all the all the maladies and he was nailed to the cross first peter 2 24 he took it upon himself and in his own body he was nailed to the cross and by his stripes we were healed you know peter says so think about this jesus died to bring healing for us and god Early on, he said, I am the God who healeth thee. And it's a covenant name, Jehovah Rapha, okay? the God who heals us. So God has a covenant of healing. And Jesus came. He even um, faced all, all the tribulations and the pain to die for us. So that, yes, to have victory over Satan, but also to give us healing. Okay, we understood this much. Now, why would that same God start putting sickness on people? Doesn't make sense. See, we have to look at the Bible or whatever is said in the light of who Jesus is. And the book of Hebrews talks about it, that Jesus is the express image of God. The heart of God uh, is understood when we look at the life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. He looked at the people and he was moved with compassion. Even people who are outside the covenant, you know, in, in, in Matthew 15, you have that uh, woman who is not a, a Jewess and yet, because of her faith, he says, great is your faith, woman, great is your faith. And uh, the demon-possessed child of that uh, lady, right? She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And he was impressed by the faith. And he, he was compassionate enough to release healing to her. She also got her healing because of the faith. So all I'm trying to say is, whenever we hear a prophetic word, check it in line with who jesus is so if someone came and they said that god has brought COVID, god has put sickness on the whole world if you if you try to understand it on the basis of who jesus is it's contradictory so you know maybe uh the the prophet had a sense that a sickness will come 
to the earth and it will be covid and a lot of people will be affected see that is different because that is information god giving him a piece of information or revelation saying this is coming that we can understand uh, but maybe in releasing the word uh, he has said uh, god is putting it on you that later on we we will see about how a prophetic word or a revelation can be genuine it can be true okay but the way we present it also matters so having known this through a prophecy maybe the way he expressed it by saying god is putting covid on people uh, and all i don't think i mean it's it's not uh, biblical to say that god is putting sickness on people because we are contradicting the bible when we say that now why did sickness come there are many reasons uh, you know uh, uh, regarding that we know that this world is already um, affected and corrupted by sin uh, and therefore sickness and disease by default it exists in the world whether we like it or not okay so there are times when when uh, um, you know all these pandemic endemic diseases uh, affect people there are uh, natural disasters and things like that but every time such things happen to blame god for each incident is not correct because you see the earth is already in that state of corruption okay which is what jesus came to redeem us from and so you see his agenda his work is so different from what is actually going on here and that is why we talk about believers authority that is why we talk about you know declare what is in the word we we all pray for what we pray oh be healed we pray god bless our nation because that is in line with god's word what does god want to do he wants to redeem he wants to restore he wants to bring see repentance so that his blessing can come upon the people okay so that is the way we should look at it uh, i hope uh, it helps you jeffina yes past <laughs> thank you uh, it was such a experience actually because covid was for like 2 years right so 2 years i believed like okay god sent and the thing is he was a very famous person also so almost every kamilian we believed so when we got back to church our pastor was uh, telling it a lot of times like it's not god's will because he was in such a furious uh, position to say it uh, because everyone actually believed it's from god so it was a great task for my pastor to make uh, everyone feel that no it's not from god I don't believe on these things uh, so yeah and it took me some time to realize okay whatever the pastor says also it makes sense but yeah i just wanted to know because uh, one more thing is just because he did that uh, prophecy in a wrong way but there are other ways he ministered to me also like the way he prayed and maybe he presented it in a wrong way so that uh, made me understand that it's not about us sometimes but it's about the anointing doesn't mean just because we make mistake uh, will we missed because there are people uh, after hearing to my pastor they are like okay so he's a false prophet forever <laughs> but uh, yeah so i just wanted to ask this and get a clarification about it yeah thanks jeffina uh, you answered it you know you are, you sort of clarified your own uh, uh, doubt and confusion there that's right see some uh, prophetic words may not be presented right okay and some prophetic words may even be false it could be uh, but it doesn't mean we should we we should label that uh, child of god or you know whoever is is flowing in the prophetic as a false person hopefully they they will learn as they go forward and make the changes that they need to but you know god god's uh, gift is perfect god's gift is perfect uh, but somewhere in the presentation you know we all uh, might make mistakes and we'll talk about it later you know how do we actually receive the word and once we receive the word how do we deliver the word in the best possible way okay so uh, thanks for that uh, let's uh, go to divya divya you you have something to say thank you pastor i just had a couple of questions actually based on what uh, you just 
uh, explained uh, today, as well as uh, one question from the previous chapter. Uh, so if it is OK, uh, it's just uh, based on what you just told us, uh, these different ways, uh, right, uh, about uh, uh, how God expresses himself, like the burden of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, all these. Uh, are these uh, different ways applicable even today, like for New Testament believers? Uh, that's my first question. Yes, Divya, it's possible that we have a similar experience. We may feel that um, sense of responsibility or the sense of seriousness or uh, there are there are times when you feel like you're being prompted. I have heard people say things like that. Even uh, something like uh, uh, when people are flowing in in the anointing, uh, not just the prophetic anointing, but they sense the anointing come upon them. Uh, they've even felt as if there's there's a cloth or a mantle that comes and covers them. So the experiences of the Old Testament can repeat in our lives. And this is the beauty of it. Each time, it can be very different. It can be very, very different. I remember one, one uh, pastor, he used to say, when I am flowing in the prophetic, I feel like my ears are getting hot. OK, like literally his physical ears, he used to feel the temperature and it used to go hot. So that's different. I've not seen that in, in the Bible. So you can have experiences the way it is seen here, but it, you can also have experiences outside of what you've read. So uh, we won't box God up. It can manifest in different ways. So it, you may not even sense it and you're prophesying. That also can happen. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Also, uh, regarding uh, when you said the warning or judgments, usually such uh, things come, uh, come to the office of prophet. Um, did I understand right? Yeah. So uh, so uh, why is it that uh, is one, one of my questions. Um, uh, that is it an indicator that you might uh, that person is called for the office of prophecy is it like an indicator or uh, is there something that helps one um, understand or identify if they are called into the office office of prophecy mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thank you Divya. so see i'm saying generally okay generally um, warnings and judgments are part of the ministry of the office of a prophet because remember we said a prophet has governmental responsibility in the kingdom of god and uh, god releases words over um, uh, territories regions and large sections of uh, people so uh, God would send his word through the prophet. Okay. Now, this is not to say that a believer or somebody who's in the prophetic ministry will not get warnings. We may get warnings. Uh, but then it's a little, uh, what do you say? It's a little, I mean, you have to handle it very sensitively. And which is why we we would usually say, like, if you if you do get a warning then just pray for that person or in in some nice way you know be go ahead and you can share that word but yes uh, we may not get like it, it'll be very rare the the warnings that we get okay as compared to somebody who's in the office of a prophet now having said that i would not say that getting warnings alone confirms that somebody is a prophet because it could simply be a very judgmental spirit. You know what I mean? Uh, where we are flowing in the prophetic, but then we also carry a judgmental spirit about everyone where we are saying, you know, I see that God, if you don't change yourself, if you don't, then God is going to uh, punish you. You're going to have cons. So sometimes uh, people keep coming up with these kind of prophecies. Again, sometimes because they naturally carry a judgmental spirit and it has nothing to do with God warning people. Does that make sense, Divya, what I shared? Uh, yes, Pastor. I was trying to, I used to, I tell now I used to think office of prophecy is something like, um, you know, telling to a 
to a group of people like a nation or a, because in the old testament we do see mostly like if i take the example of jeremiah mostly it was uh, for israel uh, like it was uh, just for that group of people right uh, so are you uh, i till now are you uh, i thought like it is for a large section of people or a nation or something like that uh, so is that is uh, like uh, is it beyond that or is it like yeah so that's correct a uh, prophet would uh, somebody who's in the office of a prophet would address matters um, over large groups of people that is one aspect of it but then there are many others also that we are like uh, releasing a word like a directive from god pronouncing moves of god so there are many other things including messages to nations and groups of people yeah um, that's okay so why i'm asking is like uh, office of prophet uh, in the sense i'm uh, I can only refer to what is in the Old Testament, right? Uh, New Testament, I, uh, I'm not sure. Like in the Old Testament, uh, uh, either the prophet will be, you know, speaking to the people, or he will be speaking to the uh, king of uh, of the nation. So it's like he's speaking to a uh, to a authority or a nation. So uh, very few instances we could see like uh, they're speaking to particular individuals. Like if at all, uh, uh, for example, if I'm taking um, Nathan telling David, even that is uh, to a king, right? Yeah, it's a very personal thing, but still it's to a king. So uh, is it like, uh, is it separated for such a uh, section you know authorities groups of people or is it like to normal ordinary you know group of people so i am just getting a little confused here no 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 need uh, to get confused you're right you're right we usually see uh, i mean we see prophets in the old testament okay so the prophetic anointing um it it was Okay, again, usually, can we say that? Yeah, usually we can say that because uh, there were a few instances like, you know, Saul prophesying in the uh, in the company of the prophets and even the, the donkey, you know, having a revelation and uh, speaking to Balaam. So in all these cases, prophecy is there, uh, but it's not through a prophet. But something like a 98 percent you would see only prophets prophesying in the old testament so this progression which we are talking about you know simple gift of prophecy where all believers can prophesy there can be people in the prophetic ministry all this is in the new testament because now what's happening every believer can be baptized in the holy spirit and flow in the gifts of the spirit okay but in the old testament your observation is correct there were mainly three anointings so there would be kings who would be anointed with oil um, uh, you know uh, there would be priests who would be anointed with oil uh, and there would be prophets who would be anointed with oil so uh, most people that you read about are in the office of a prophet in the old testament no wonder they talk to kings they speak to nations okay yeah that makes it clear okay okay yeah uh, i have one more is it fine yes, right. yes please go ahead please go ahead. Yeah. yeah so uh i just wanted to know whether uh, we we uh, talked about uh like god speaking through uh you know um, illuminate or like illuminating illuminating one's mind with a word or uh, through a vision or things like that uh plus uh, uh i had a question actually earlier like is it through number even god speaks through numbers does he speak through numbers mm, i had like an experience uh, uh like uh, in here 911 is a number to call the uh, like uh, emergency in 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 here so uh god uh, showed me jeremiah 3 333 i believe 
uh, in which it says, call to me and I'll answer you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So, and uh, uh, it was like, God is telling you, it's your 911. <laughs> so it, it is very beautiful picture for me because 911 is like an emergency. So it's like, if at all something happens uh, and you need instant help, we call 911. So the police, ambulance, everything will come at the fire department, everything will come. So 333, <laughs> it was like, and so when my kids say something to me, I would say, uh, you can call 333 because it's like uh, you 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 pray to God or you connect with God. So I just was uh, wondering whether God can speak like that through numbers. Uh, so the answer is yes, Divya. God can speak through numbers. OK, OK. Oh, that's yeah. 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 So, uh, see, we will uh, we will understand through the scores that there is no limitation on God. He can speak any which way through numbers. And you know, these days I've heard in some churches they um, during worship time they practice prophetic art. So I heard this one testimony that uh, uh, somebody was painting a certain bird uh, during the worship time and for a particular person that bird had some connection you know to uh, incidents in their life and when they saw that bird it was really like how do these people know about this bird and you know god uh, th those incidents came back to them and there was like a healing that was coming to their heart when they saw that particular bird which was painted so you know, there is no limitation. God can speak through an image. He can speak through uh, a, a number. He can he can he can speak through an incident. He can speak whichever way. But we always say that uh, we should have a good good foundation of God's word because God will speak in many ways. But once we hear from God, we need to have the ability to evaluate it. Like how Jafina mentioned, no, that prophecy. OK, word has come. Message has come. Now, how is it from God? Is it not from God? That evaluation is our responsibility. Now, if I don't know the Bible and what the Bible has to say, what happens? I will just blindly believe everything. Okay, so that is the only uh, uh, you know area uh, where where people people you know some if they are not strong uh, they they will start believing all the wrong things. So being strong in the word is is very very important. So yes, God can speak even through numbers. Uh, uh, anything else, Divya or? Nothing else. Thank you, so, thank you so much. And uh, oh, okay. the reference was Jeremiah 33 3. I'm sorry, I, I thought huh. it was 33. It's oh, just okay. the numbers are so like 333. Three, three. So it's like Jeremy, it's 33 3. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Divya. Uh, and I'm seeing here in the chat, uh, Brother Isaac has a question. He says, what is the difference between words of wisdom and words of prophecy? Thanks. Um, so words of wisdom and words of prophecy, um, they are both gifts of the Spirit. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when we go, uh, we see a, a certain list there with nine gifts. So in the nine gifts, one would be word of wisdom, the other would be a prophecy. So what is the difference between these two? See, prophecy uh, is hearing from God, hearing from God, a message and releasing it. Now this message, uh, uh, okay, let, let me just say that much for now. But word of wisdom, it comes in the prophetic in the in, under that prophetic umbrella because we are getting it from God. So like prophecy, we are hearing from God. But the speciality about a word of wisdom is it gives an answer or a solution. And that is why the term wisdom, you see, uh, maybe we are praying for someone and uh, they have an issue that they are facing uh, that uh, I don't have you know, I don't have money right now and I'm going through a lack. I don't know what to do. So as we are praying for them, when we give them some pointers, you know, we might say, uh, I can, 
are, are you able to paint when we are praying for them suddenly we say hey are you able to paint and and the person says yeah i i can paint um, and so uh, you you might say something like god is showing me that uh, in this season you have to paint and you have to uh, showcase your painting that might actually be the solution to their problem where they are lacking money and god is showing them a way to actually make money okay so solutions or um, answers all of that is wisdom a word of wisdom when when we are telling a word but that word leads to some sort of a, a resolution in people's lives uh, does that help uh, brother isaac yes uh, yes uh, i think uh, i understand that like you say um words of wisdom are always like a counsel i say counsel to direct or yeah, edify somebody yeah thank you thank you uh, very nice i'm enjoying this class uh, with your batch good that you know you're thinking about prophecy and you have all these questions uh, so let's continue in our notes here uh, and as and when you have questions just feel free to stop me so uh, page 52 it uh, shows us that in the old testament god moved through prophets there are a couple of uh, new testament scriptures as well that uh, talk about this we know that there were hundreds of messian messianic prophecies in the old testament isn't it so god through prophets spoke of things to come so the spirit of the lord was moving in this way um, and uh, beforehand the sufferings of christ uh, and, and many many such things were actually um, spoken of by prophets and even scripture scripture itself what is scripture second peter 1 verses 20 and 21 it says knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit so how did uh, the log logos come about the bible which we hold in our hands it was through inspiration inspiration of the holy spirit so everyone who actually wrote the words of the bible there was that inspiration by the holy spirit and what did we call pro what how did we define prophecy earlier we said it's a now word of god uh, a message from god so all of the bible has been written in that manner by being inspired god has given us a message so all of scripture is prophetic so it wouldn't be wrong to say you know the bible uh, it's it is a prophetic book uh, and the this book of course uh, carries so ma many instructions and uh, you know um, everything that is helpful for us to do life here on earth okay all right so um, that is again something that uh, we want to touch upon that old testament men and women uh, prophets are people through whom god spoke and he released his word so now coming to this section that talks about the difference between the old testament and the new testament experiences uh, and as i have pointed out earlier in the old testament the holy spirit would only come upon or work through um a few people and that's why people needed to go to a seer on their own they couldn't hear from god they needed to go to a person who was anointed by god to release the word of god so that is uh, something that happened in the old testament but what is happening under you know the new testament and uh, the new covenant every believer has the holy spirit living inside of them and every believer can be baptized in the holy spirit and so the prophetic gift it need not be limited only to one person so you know people ask the question can all believers flow in the prophetic answer is yes now all believers can flow in the prophetic okay because 
the same holy spirit who has the gifts you know he he is the one who baptizes us and so everyone can uh, have have a, a place in the prophetic ministry as far as the new testament is concerned but if you look at the old testament there were only a few people here and there who were known as prophets who brought the word of the lord to the people so that is the major difference uh, we'll stop here we're also out of time uh, if there's anything that you want to add you could uh, go ahead and share otherwise we can you know resume the class in the next session yeah ask ask us uh, so i have one more question uh, so we know that prophecy is meant for edification uh, so i had experiences where uh, uh, someone came and prophesied to me but it added much more burden to what i was going through Uh, that was not something that i wanted to hear that was uh, breaking my spirit it is getting me into fear and uh, the thing is the person came again and again uh, with the same thing but it was not at all helping me in any way so i went to one of my spiritual friend and i was telling uh, that was in everything like uh, these are the things uh, that i've been saying but it's not helping me in any way so what what my friends and this is said, just leave it and you go to the word of god <laughs> it it's much more better so this is one of my experiences but i so does it mean like he told it in a wrong way or uh, does it mean like i didn't accept it sometimes i'll be like oh maybe i should have accepted what he said and should have prayed maybe i should have changed my perspective or something uh, that is one thing but and there is one more incident uh, where uh, so one of A, a minister that i know she went and prayed for a sick person so she, to, she felt that the person is about to die so she just prayed and she felt it in her heart like this person will not live but the thing is she didn't tell it to the family she just came and told my me myself and my mom like uh, just take care of them so i felt like that is a way better like maybe she sensed uh, but you can't just go and tell the family directly like uh, the person is going to die so uh, sometimes when we is it possible that we get like these prophecies also something that's kind of negative that's not uh, really edifying so when we get such things what we should actually do this is my question okay so uh it's true jafina that sometimes there can be warnings or god can be uh telling us about something that is going to happen which is unpleasant Uh, i had one such experience uh, but it was good that you know i i heard that i was just completing my masters program and i um, i was studying in a different country so then i was going to come back to india and in our church there uh, they had some prophets come over and those prophets were prophesying over people even i went for prayer and while praying for me uh, you know the the prophet imagine okay they they were prophets they not even like just believer type uh, so they prophesied and uh, the lady uh, the prophetess she told me that i see darkness ahead of you uh, things are going to be very difficult and this and that and so many things i was like why did i even come for prayer <laughs> because you know she's telling me all these things that don't make me happy uh, but you see the beauty of the redemptive word so after sharing everything that i i am going to go through uh sh- in the end she said uh, but god is working on your behalf and the tables are going to turn and the flood of his grace his mercy is coming so what what exactly did she do she she if you want to call it predicted you know that you're going to go through a tough season but there was redemption in the message because she said that's not all god is going to come and you will see how beautifully he he uh, gets you out of this situation and it actually happened because uh, what she was saying was i struggled a lot with my job search after that and it was a very hard season in my in my life uh, but beautifully i got a, a wonderful job and then you know my my career sort of picked up uh, so the point i'm making is yes sometimes the prophetic word can have parts where we feel it's not pleasant or uh, that it's very painful but then uh, 
we really need to check it see again as i told you check it with scripture check it with the inner witness of of the holy spirit and all to see whether what they are saying is is really from god and uh, the last part you said uh, somebody had this word that uh, someone's going to die they did the right thing see when we release a prophetic word make sure don't release it in such a way that it creates fear because if it creates fear where is the edification where is the exhortation right so even if god has revealed there is a right way of releasing that word and this person did it correctly they came and told you please take care all that so then you're able to do something positive in that situation so that's correct that's correct sure okay so go ahead you can have your break uh, 9:52 right now we'll come back at uh, 10:02 and continue with the next session thank you <laughs>